Hello everyone. It's so good to have you come by and visit my channel <laughs> and welcome. A lot of people have been asking me for more Bible readings and I've been keen to read some more to you. I found it difficult to get the opportunity and sometimes I wonder if that's perhaps a deliberate ploy on the part of our enemy. <laughs> and sometimes it's just difficult to find the right moment uh, and also to be in the right space to prepare to share a Bible study with you. But this is something that's been on my heart recently. It's quite a personal one to me. And it's not something I fully understand. But I want to share it with you today because I've had a very interesting day. So tell me, how has your day been? Often people say, hi, how are you? say, good thanks, but we don't show what's really going on and maybe when people ask they don't really want to know the full details. It's a fine line, but sometimes we need to seek out a bit of help and sometimes we need to cry out to God and say, please God. I need something from you. I don't know what, but you know what I need. Anyway, before I ramble on about my day, I think we'll get into God's Word. And I wonder if we can pray. You know I like to pray before we read God's Word. So let's just close our eyes. And focus on the Lord for just a moment. Just know that He loves you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your Son who gave up everything for us. That precious Lamb sacrificed for us worthy lamb. Thank you for your spirit who is right here with us. Lord, as we open your word and try to understand what you have to say to us, I pray that our hearts would be open and Holy Spirit that you'd speak to each one of us. And you would share with each one of us what we need to know. You know each individual need. And sometimes we all receive something different from your word. Because you know what we need. We ask that you would share truth with us. And bless your word. We thank you for your word. Thank you, thank you for this love letter to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I've got a glass of water here. And it's from when we had self-denial week a few years ago at our church. And the money would go into the container. We have a different container each year and go towards missions. And this one has a fishing net with fish and it says, Till the nets are full. <laughs> so today 
I'm going to share with you from Ezekiel. From the King James Version. My very big, heavy, falling apart Bible. revisited some colour photographs. Amazing how it hasn't changed in so many years. Wow. Have any of you ever been to these places? Goodness. Have any of you ever walked where our Saviour walked? Ezekiel chapter 37 and I've been thinking a little bit about the first part of this chapter and it may be familiar to some of you now at the time I think the Israelites were in captivity the Babylonians King Nebuchadnezzar so perhaps this is somewhere in the time zone of Daniel. I'm afraid I'm not a theologian. <laughs> so I don't know all the details. But I believe Israel was in captivity at the time. And I think maybe they'd lost hope. And I've been thinking about the vision of the bones that Ezekiel was shown. I think Ezekiel had trained to be a priest in his early years, but being imprisoned by the Babylonians, so he put a little change in his direction. I'm not sure if there's a forward in this particular Bible. You might have your own Bible, you might want to read along, or you can just close your eyes and listen, maybe fall asleep under God's word, safe in the knowledge that you're safe right now as you listen to his word. Ezekiel chapter 37 the hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Lifeless, no hope of life there. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said to me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That reminds me of that song. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a great noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. 
And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Wow, the impossible <laughs> became possible as God breathed. And I like how he did it through the wind. He commanded the wind. Well, God is ruler over everything. The wind, the sea, the earth, everything. And death. Victory over death. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our paths. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. How exciting! Oh, wonderful. It's interesting. God gave Ezekiel the vision first, and then he translated it. So he really <laughs> brought that vision to life. I'm not sure if I made a pun there, <laughs> but he literally brought that vision to life so that Ezekiel would understand exactly how to relate it to the people of Israel. You see, they were, at that time, in a, in a bad space. They had lost all their hope. And yet, God had a plan for their restoration. Interesting, the verses about resurrection, you see. I believe the Bible has so much metaphor wonderful piece of literature when it comes to the study of metaphor. But could it be that God even used a metaphor that was also to be taken literally? <laughs> the promise of our own resurrection through Christ. He has it in his power to breathe life into dry bones. And metaphorically are our bones dry? You're going through a rough patch and sometimes you feel like it's just never going to end and you're just like the Israelites giving up hope and your bones are dry and you don't understand you, you have your faith you're loving God you're trusting Him but you feel like nothing is changing and you're just going through the motions. Yeah, sometimes it feels like that. Mm. But God has a plan for restoration. He had a plan for the restoration of Israel. And he has a plan for our own restoration. 
to draw us near to him and he can breathe life into our dry bones we just need to ask we sang a song in church today and the bridge of the song um, it's called Great Are You Lord some of you may know it and um, the words go all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord these bones will sing these dry bones will be resurrected and we will sing praises to our God how wonderful well, it seems to tie in with things we might read in Revelation how every living thing, everything upon the earth, all creation will one day cry out in praise to our God singing about his greatness Revelation 5 I believe how amazing, how exciting. Can you imagine trees moving, they clapping. <laughs> trees as they sway from side to side in praise of God. Every creature lifting up their voice. Great are you, Lord. We were once dry bones and he breathed life. Should I read on or should I tell you about my day? I'll read on. <laughs> Where should we pick up? Verse 15, Ezekiel chapter 37. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions, then take another stick and write upon it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand, before their eyes, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children, for ever and my servant David shall be their prince forever. 
Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. What a wonderful prophecy for his people. How excited they must have been to hear it. I hope. It would have been nice for Ezekiel to be sharing good news with them. How they would all be united. How wonderful there will be there will be one king over there. Oh, and Jesus our shepherd. Oh God is our rescuer. He takes us out of bad situations. Sometimes it takes time. But he is our rescuer. He has a plan for restoration and he wants to draw us near to him. And yes, our dry bones will sing praise to our God. You know, sometimes I find it difficult to really be a good Christian. You know, the type of Christian that really delves into the Bible every single day or the kind of Christian who can pray fervently for hours on end. I struggle sometimes. Sometimes life is busy, sometimes I'm tired and, and, and sometimes I just think I'm just not very good at it. But God doesn't ask us to be a good Christian. And sometimes I think about it and I think my mind can be stupid. My emotions can be stupid. My body can fail me. <laughs> but my soul, my spirit, my spirit knows God. That's... I'm not sure if I'm explaining it right. Sometimes my mind, my brain, I might get doubts. My very essence of myself yearns for him. Even if I go off and do something stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Even if I fall off the wagon and eat a whole jar, one kg jar of jelly beans. <laughs> Even if I may have gone a day without going into his word or, or just... I've just been silly. My soul always cries out for him. My dry bones. Let me tell you about the dry bones. You see, I have been caring for children for 32 years. My oldest daughter is 30, but I was involved in foster care for a couple of years before she was born and been involved in foster care for 10 years and we now have three beautiful children who are permanent and it's not adoption it's the closest we get to adoption in New Zealand where we do have custody and guardianship and they're beautiful children but they come from different backgrounds and they're high maintenance very high maintenance so for the past 32 years non-stop I have constantly had young children and my husband and I we're getting older and our youngest is 3 years old my husband is in his 60s I'm in my fifties. Mm -mm. Shh, don't tell anyone. 
well, sometimes I get a little bit drained, tired, exhausted. Our children, our younger children, these three. Sometimes I worry that I'm making mistakes. <laughs> I guess nothing's changed since when I was a young mum. And sometimes I feel like I'm in that valley of dry bones where I've just been constantly on a treadmill. And come on, you mums know this. Where you're constantly giving out. You've always got somebody saying, Mum, Mum, I want this, get me this, following you everywhere. You don't have the freedom to just go out. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I seldom get out. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't mean to make that into a, a negative thing. I love my babies very, very, very much. But lately, I felt like I've been in that valley of dry bones. And this last week or two, I've been crying out to God. Please, encourage me. Give me something I need. Something I'm tired. I'm being real here. And... This morning, before church, I was able to sit in church for the entire service. Um, I didn't have to go out with the children this week. Actually, I've been able to sit in church for a few weeks lately, which has been wonderful. And this morning, feeling tired, feeling dry, feeling a little bit hopeless, like I just have nothing to really look forward to, which that's, that's not true. <laughs> but I, I said to God, please, will there be a word for me at church? Or maybe somebody will pray for me. I mean, there's nothing seriously wrong. I'm just tired. I was tired and feeling a little drained and dry. And for the last few weeks, I've been able to identify with these dry bones. How about you? So let me tell you about this interesting day. I went to church. And with this passage on the dry bones on my heart for the last couple of weeks, we sang, Great are you, God. Great are you, Lord. We sang, all the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And there was a testimony time. And one of the men in our church stood up and gave a testimony. It wasn't ground-shaking stuff. But it felt like, even though his situation was different, It felt like he was speaking for me, on behalf of me. Isn't that special? I thought it was rather neat. And I thought, okay, I'll take that. Maybe that's a message for me to encourage me. Someone else has been in the same situation. <laughs> Similar. Well, then my children started to play up a little bit, and they were running around out in the foyer. So I went to sort them out. And as I went out there, this man's wife, who was a friend of mine, she was just coming in from having given her little boy a bit of a talking to, because he'd been playing up. And she has children with not the same situation, she has children who are complex needs, as I do. I'm one of my children in particular, and there's one we're not too sure about what her complex needs are, but a referral has been made to have some testing done. 
and then there's a three-year-old. So, I mean, we're, we're a couple of mums who can relate to each other. And we started up a conversation, and before I knew it, I burst into tears. And I told her that her husband had shared something that had touched my heart, and uh, I kind of shared with her how I was feeling. And, you know, we just had the neatest conversation. I had a little cry on her shoulder, and it was just neat because she was the very person that I should have spoken to. Wonderful. And I thought, thank you, God. And I said, well, you know, I think it's a God thing that I bumped into you out here. And she said, yeah, maybe it was a good thing that my boy was playing up and, and my children too. So we had that. We kind of bonded a little bit. It was neat. And so I dried my eyes and went back into the service. And I thought, yay, Lord, that's two things. You know, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm encouraged now. I, I can take that. And then during the service, um, the lady sharing the message, um, she said something about, have you been weeping? And and this was a part of the message, and she started talking about weeping, and I thought, goodness me, I only just, yes, you know, just outside in the foyer just now. And she shared a little bit about weeping and, and looking up to the Lord, focusing on the Lord, and I thought, okay, yeah, I'll take that. So I started having a series of events, and I'd been asked to visit someone in hospital and, and take his wife and an elderly man, and um, his daughter's a friend of mine, and I'd been asked to go in and cut his hair, because I used to be a hairdresser. And I was happy to do that. So I took his wife in, and cut his hair, had a nice time, and they they were acting like I was just doing the most amazing thing. But you see, I was given some time out from my children. I never get to go out by myself. So I got to play grown-ups and talk to grown-ups. And as much as I love my children, it was just really nice to have that bit of time and, and also meet up with my friend. And there's also another friend who was in hospital, a friend from church. So while we go, while we're here, I might go and visit her. And I ran into another friend in the car park, and um, it was lovely. I hadn't seen her for a while. I'm like, thank you, God. You know, I'm having a good day. And at the end of the church service, incidentally, I was thinking, you know, if they give the opportunity to go up the front for prayer. I think I'll do it, but I don't normally like to do that, I seldom, I haven't done that for years, and I went to visit my other friend, and then shortly before I was going to leave, incidentally I met another friend, there, too. there were friends everywhere, it was like God had brought all, all the people I love, well, not all of them, but you know, lots of people, so that I could actually have good conversations with people didn't have to talk about kid things. <laughs> it was just a really neat afternoon. As I was about to leave, I wanted to pray with my friend. And another person walked in. I'm like, oh, that was good timing. We're just about to pray. Well, he prayed. We prayed. I prayed. We all prayed. <laughs> Other people in the hospital room hearing us pray. And it was wonderful. We had a really amazing time of prayer. It was just wonderful. And we could sense God with us. And I'm thinking, yay, thank you, God. Went to pay for my parking. And my friend, who we'd prayed with, he wanted to pay. And because it was actually his father-in-law, I'd cut his, cut his hair. And... Um, he decided to ask me how it was going with the children. I didn't tell him much. You know, I did tell him it can be hard. I don't get out much, and so it was really neat to get out. And do you know, God remembered that I wanted someone to pray for me. And do you know, right there in the hospital lobby, the 
this afternoon, right there, next to the elevators, next to the car parking machine, my friend started to pray for me. And it was without any bells or whistles, it was all very simple. Praying for peace over my household, it was wonderful. <laughs> and walking out of the hospital, a complete stranger walked by me and I don't know if it's because I have pink hair and I was wearing a pink dress but this complete stranger she turned to me and she said seeing you makes me happy <laughs> blew my mind so that is my interesting day I just asked for one little piece of encouragement my bones were feeling dry and look what God gave me he gave me blessing after blessing, after blessing, after blessing today. And I had a good day. I just wanted to share that with you and encourage you that if you're having a rough patch, give it to God and ask Him to encourage you. He will. He won't let you down. It won't always be how you expect. Know that he loves you and he does not want you to be in captivity he does not want you lying in a valley your bones all dried up and dead he wants to breathe life into your spirit he wants to breathe life into you he wants to resurrect you metaphorically and one day physically what an amazing God we serve. And serving our God is a pleasure because he's not a God who take, take, takes like, like all the other gods that have been worshipped over the centuries and millennia. He's not a God that demands sacrifice, but he's a God, our God, who has given sacrifice. And worshipping him brings us joy, brings us peace. When we worship him, he gives. He gives, gives, gives. He loves you so much. And he wants to breathe his life into you. I hope this has blessed you today. And I didn't ramble on too long. I hope you're feeling relaxed and ready for sleep. And now it's getting late and I think it's time for me to go to sleep. So I will say Good night.